Hi everyone, I'm Mindy Egan and welcome to my first floss tube video. Now you may be wondering what a floss tube is and really all floss tube is is a video style about anything that has to do with floss or sewing or quilting. So it is just a type of video kind of like card tutorials but really uh, from what I've been watching is people discuss uh, different projects that they're working on, whether it's quilting or the sewing or cross-stitching. Um, they show you their work in progress, maybe some upcoming starts that they have, and even some tutorials. Now, one of the reasons that I decided to start FlossTube is I have kind of rekindled my love for cross stitch and that's really what I'll be focusing on is my cross stitching and then hopefully finishing some projects and sharing them with you. I will provide links uh, down in the description when I can of different patterns and things that I find. If you are new here, my name is Mindy Egan. I'm a full-time card maker so my YouTube channel has mainly been card making and how I created cards, maybe some different techniques. I do work for a lot of companies right now in the industry, so I provide introduction videos for them. I do videos for them on their channel and then also on my channel. Card making, I absolutely love it. Um, I, I love creating projects. I love getting inky and doing different techniques. Now, one of the reasons that I, I kind of went back to cross stitch is I want to decorate my home. I want to be able to display something that I've created. And cross stitch, I used to do way back in, I shouldn't say way back, but in my early 20s, I used to do cross stitch. And it was very basic. I had no knowledge except, you know, make an X with your thread. And that was about it. So uh, now with YouTube and so many video tutorials, I have really rekindled my love for it, that finished product and hopefully being able to display some things in my house. I have two children. Uh, one at this time is going to be graduating as a senior this year from high school. And my son is in seventh grade. So he's in middle school and he's autistic. And it's because of that that I became a full-time card maker. I needed to be home with him. I had to leave the workforce so I could be home for our in-home therapy and, and be available for him. We, we did run into quite a few hiccups where me being at home really was the best decision. And because of all of that, I filled my time with card making and that led me to creating videos and meeting lots of people. And I love the card making community, the companies, the people that I work with. It has led me to some great friendships. I am keeping the floss tube videos all on my one YouTube channel. I am not going to be starting a separate YouTube channel because I honestly just don't have time to sit and flip between YouTube channels but I'm going to try and make sure to title the floss tube videos with floss tube. So if you're a card maker, uh, you know if you wanna watch it or not. And with the floss tube videos, something I have found even, even as a card maker uh, is that they're really great to just put on and listen to while you're creating. You know, you can peek up once in a while and, and take a look at what they're showing, but I find it's just something really nice to put on in the background and then like I said, there are tutorials out there about finishing projects too. So even if you're a card maker, maybe this is something you still might enjoy listening to. So what I want to do today or the whole point of my video today is to just get started. I kind of wish I would have did this with my card making videos because we all have to start somewhere and I'm a lot more comfortable now being in front of the camera uh, than I was when I had started card making, I don't know, five, six years ago, not sure anymore. Uh, but I did kind of want to just have a starting point, somewhere to jump off of. And even for me to go back and, and look at where I started compared to maybe where I'm gonna be going. So it's just kind of a starting point. And also if you're new or if you wanna get back into cross stitch, I'm gonna also share some in, information about where you can get started too. Now, I am definitely not a professional. I did do a lot of YouTube searches and I watched a lot of videos to get me back into at least the basics. And one of the places I do want to let you know about is Fat Quarter Shop. They have a floss tube channel. And 
I, they have some amazing videos, some very basic how to's. If you just want to learn to stitch, they have it. If you want to figure out what supplies you need just to get started, they have it. So I really do highly recommend Fat Quarter Shop. Now, before I get too far into things, I do want to go over some basic terms that you're probably going to hear, whether it's in my videos or somebody else's videos. So some of those basic terms is a sal, S-A-L. And what that is, is a stitch along. So from what I'm gathering, uh, maybe a YouTuber has picked out a pattern, other people can buy that pattern, and they have maybe weekly videos where you stitch along with them. So that is a sal. Another term is FFO. And what that is, is fully finished object. I find kind of funny that it's called object, but <laughs> fully finished object. and Really what that is, is once someone takes their cross stitch um, completed project and whether they attach it to maybe a display board or how they finished it to turn it into their home decor, that is an FFO. Another term you're going to hear is a WIP, W-I-P. And what that is, is a work in progress. So a lot of times that is what I see with floss tube videos is people are showing their whips is what you're going to hear. And it's just kind of showing how far they got, maybe what they stitched, what threads they used. Um, that's going to be another term you're going to hear is the different kinds of threads. And just like in card making, there are tons of different threads, different fabrics, and trying to figure out what's going to suit your needs is going to be kind of the starting point. Now, as far as fabrics to stitch on, um, I'm most common with a 14 count or a 16 count in Ada because that is the most widely available that I find whether it's Michaels, Hobby Lobby, things like that. And those have fairly big holes to stitch with and I find that is what I started with. So a lot of projects I'm going to share with you today are on a 14 count because that's all I had. Although I did place an order with Fat Quarter Shop quite a few times and I'm experimenting with different fabrics. So I will be sharing that with you in just a moment. Now, a few other things that I wanted to point out along my journey so far, which I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, like I said, I have some notes jotted down. Uh, Fat Quarter Shop uh, definitely is one of the places I highly recommend, whether it's their website, they have a ton of products available for you. Uh, they also just have a lot of videos and inspiration. Uh, another company that I have come across is called Primrose Cottage. I enjoy their patterns. They also have some tutorials there for you as well. Uh, another company is Stitching with the Housewives, which I find, for one, entertaining, and plus they have a lot of inspiration, very good at what they do. Uh, another company, which is kind of what triggered my start, is uh, Shannon Christine Designs. So she had released some freebie patterns on her Facebook page, and that is what I started with. And I'm going to give you some pointers about that with starting. So Shannon Christine Designs, they were very cute and easy for me to complete, which is uh, what drew me to it. I figured it was something I could get done in a reasonable amount of time. Now, another couple companies that I have found um, is the Paisley's Polka Dots. I think it's called Paisley's Polka Dots. And a lot of what I'm seeing with them is woodworking. So it is display pieces to put your cross stitch pieces on. So I will link that down below in the video description. And then another company is Chantel's 141 Design. She's got a lot of products on her website. There's patterns, there's fabric, but there's also display pieces, which I do have an order placed uh, with Chantel's website as well. And if you've gotten this far with me and you notice that I kind of touch my ears or something, I am sick. <laughs> and so I sound a little raspy. My ears are really plugged up, but I really just wanted to get this video started before I got too far into the new year and too far with my projects because I really wanted to share them with you guys. Okay, now as far as getting started with a cross stitch project, and especially being that I am kind of coming into this pretty new, I mean, I have some basic knowledge of cross stitch, but I wanted to share with you some tips that I have found helped me. So when I was getting started, one of the things that I looked for was starting with a very small pattern, something that I felt I could accomplish in a reasonable, reasonable amount of time. And that is a really good starting point. If you start with a pattern that is going to be you know a pretty decent sized display you're going to start and it's going to feel like you're taking forever or 
you're not going to get that accomplished feeling. And I feel like if we start small, something that can just go on a little maybe four by four square or a pillow, something like that, then I feel that gives us more ambition to work on more projects because we are getting something accomplished. So that was one thing I really looked for. Okay, so I mentioned that I did a little shopping at Fat Quarter Shop. That's what happens over Christmas break is you watch videos and you start just buying things. And I wanna share that haul with you. So right now this is just kind of a haul. I wouldn't necessarily say you need to buy all of this stuff. Um, some of it was me just kind of trying to figure out what I like. So I'm gonna take you down to my tabletop and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so one of the first things that I picked up um, was going to be the fabric that I was going to be cross stitching on. And like I said, this was actually kind of an experimental. I bought a few things. Something I really wish that they had was like a sampler pack of uh, fabric. So I could kind of test things out because I don't know how my eyes are going to adjust to anything. Okay, so here are some of the fabrics that I picked up. This is Light Taupe 28 Count Lugana. And like I said, be sure to reference Fat Quarter Shop. She has an excellent, excellent video about fabric. So this is one I picked up, the 28 count in this light taupe. So I really like that kind of craft color. I also picked one up in white. Uh, this is a 25 count. And then this is the black 28 count Monaco. Yep, these both are. So I think projects look amazing on black. So I really want to try it, but I'm a little nervous about my eyes. So we will see how that goes. And typically from what I have read or watched about these higher counts, the 25, 28 is, and I didn't realize this, this is something, like I said, I've kind of learned watching some of these videos is that it's not just one square put an X. They're actually going over two squares. So again, I really do highly recommend Fat Quarter Shop videos. They have a lot of really great tutorials on how to stitch on these types of fabrics. Now, another couple kind that I got is the DMC. Now this, this is probably the most common brand when it comes to uh, your fabric. You can find these in a lot of your local stores, Michaels, Walmart even might have some of these. This is in the 28 count Monaco. And um, we'll see, it's just an experiment. I bought a couple of these. So I'm just going to be kind of going to be experimenting. But like I said, I, I really wish some of these companies would just come out with a sampler pack Maybe they do, and I don't know it. Uh, I didn't find a sampler pack, but I would love just a little four by four square of each of the different colors and counts so I can practice to find out what works best for me. Because I had to buy all of these to figure out if I'm gonna like them or not. So, so that is the fabric. I have some other things that I'm going to show you. Okay, so I know this looks like a crazy lot, but I just kind of was picking up things here and there that I thought I might need or be using in the future. So let's start with the top of the pile here. Uh, I picked up some ribbon and I also picked up some rickrack. I noticed a lot of people use this to finish off their projects, whether it's making bows or adding around their pillows that they turn their cross stitch pieces into. So I picked some of that up because I don't have any more. I got rid of all my ribbon and my rickrack. So I picked up that. I also picked up some finishing pieces. So this is a small uh, white wooden display easel to put a project on. I also bought this wooden paddle board. Um, I signed, I have actually quite a few clubs, <laughs> quite a few clubs that I signed up for with that quarter shop. And one of them is going to be creating this vertical sign. So I just went ahead and picked up the wood panel right away for it, even though I don't even have the club yet, but I picked up the panel. I also grabbed some patterns. Now, a lot of patterns you can just download and then print off yourself. I really like to have a hard copy. For one, it's just beautiful. It's already printed. I don't have to worry about wasting my ink. Um, but I just, I really like to have a hard copy. So this is from Hands On Designs. I saw Nicole Sport did something with this last year. I thought it was super, super cute. And I, I just really like this. So I wanna try this pattern. Then, like I said, Shannon Christine, I really love her designs. They're super cute. I'm gonna show you some that I already have completed but this one is a trick-or-treat mug. 
and then this is another one the apple sign so i am kind of thinking ahead right now i am also uh, kind of focusing on valentine's day because i want to be able to make some decorations for my house um, and I'm also just thinking ahead for the fall because this looks like it's going to be a, a fairly decent sized project. So I picked that up. I also have some more fabric. Um, yeah, so this is Ada 16 count. Okay, so this is something that I'm fairly comfortable thinking I can handle um, is Ada 16 count and it's that black. So I'm excited to try that. I also picked up some friction pens. So What's special about these is that you pretty much are drawing on your fabric and then it erases with heat. So that's what makes these special. So when it goes to finishing a project, I'll be using these. I also have some tacky glue. I don't remember why I needed it, but I bought it. And then tart tins. And this is an ornament pack. So I am working on some ornaments that I'm hoping to put these on, but these are super cute. Uh, there's a couple different video tutorials featuring these tart tins that I'm hoping to turn mine into. So this is super cute. So yes, thinking ahead to next year, but I also think those would be really cute to hang like my Valentine's Day ones that I'm working on if they'll fit. So I have a package. I think I actually have two packages of these. They were out of stock at first when I was looking. So when they came back into stock, I just went ahead and bought two. All right. A few other goodies is I bought... Uh, some of these little protectors. So when I start hot gluing, in case I kind of wimp out, <laughs> I bought these protectors for my fingers. I also have some of these um, mounting boards. So these are already have adhesive on them. And this, I believe, was, yep, stitching with the housewife. So they created these. This is great for those circle projects, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. So I bought a package of those. I also bought some of these off of Amazon. This, so this is a self stick mounting board, which is going to be good for some of those bigger projects like that Easter one that I showed you. So I did pick up some of these from Amazon. I also have um, some, what is this, batting? I don't even know. I don't sew. So this is the funny part, guys. I don't sew. Um, I have to figure out how to use my sewing machine. I have a sewing machine. I don't know how to thread it. And I'm sorry if you hear my refrigerator right now kicking in <laughs> because I am a kitchen crafter. Uh, because my son is autistic and needs supervision, I have to do everything in my kitchen. So that's my fridge kicking on. But I picked some of that up. I also have uh, some fabric that I picked up uh, by Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet. And this has got some really uh, just pretty color choices in here. Mainly I'm going to use this for, I think, my, my roundabouts, I think they call them. So I got some of that. And then I also have some of these. So I want to talk to you about these. So these three things essentially do the same thing. And you're going to see these when I start showing you some of my whips. But these are to hold your thread. I used to do it where you wrap it around, like it'd be this shape you wrap your thread around these types of pieces and I, I my daughter actually stole all my thread but you would wrap it around I didn't like that because it left kinks in my thread so when I discovered people do it this way I bought a few different varieties and I do have some done so I will be showing you how these are used but they're essentially all used the same way as that you loop your thread here there's a ring that you can attach these are from Amazon. These I picked up from the Fat Quarter Shop uh, just to try something different. Oh, here's an example. So it loops on there, and that way I'm not getting any kinks in my thread. So I like that. Oh, yeah, here's an example here too. And this essentially does the same thing. Okay, so now I'm going to show you uh, some projects that I already have in progress. And right now what I'm doing is using them in these um, zipper bags. Some of these I got from Simon Says Stamp. Some of these I have from Tailored Expressions. So it's just a great way to kind of keep all of my things contained that I need for the project. I see a lot of people have like a fabric one that I think is really cute. Definitely want to try that sometime too. But for right now, this is what I have and this is what I'm using. This project is actually what got it started. 
So I'll have to see if I can find the finished picture. But this is what really got me started is these are from Shannon Christine Desi Designs. And these are part of the freebies that she was releasing over Christmas. So I downloaded every single one of them. And I put them, I believe this is 14 count Ada because that's what I had. So this is a cute little Christmas mug. I love this. These really made me feel like I accomplished something. This is actually the first one I did, the little snowman in the snow globe, which I love snow globes. So that was super cute. I had to adjust the colors than what was on there. So um, it's not the called for thread, I think is how they use their terminology. I had to convert it to what I had. So what all, all I really did was, for instance, this mug, there are three different shades of red. So I just went through my stash of red or I ran to the store and picked out three different shades of red because I didn't have what they had listed for the thread. And that's okay. Uh, if you're new to it, you don't have to use exactly what they have as far as the fabric or even the thread. You can change that up to what, what you like or what you have in your stash. So that is what I did. So there's these two patterns. These are the ones that I am hoping to uh, put on those tin ornaments that I was showing you. So I think these are just really cute. My back is a mess. I'm sure people are probably freaking out over that, but I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm very, very satisfied. I feel very satisfied with this. This made me just really feel like I got something done. Same thing here. And, and I, you probably may not even notice, but I do have some mess ups in here. I just adjusted to, you know, accommodate it because I didn't know how to fix it, which is something I'm, I'm going to be learning. Again, my backs are probably not the greatest thing in the world, slowly working on it. Uh, just getting a start and no one's gonna see the back. The only reason I worry about the back is because I wanna make sure this lay is flat when I go to put it on something. So I'm mainly concerned with the front, which I'm really happy with. Now, another work in progress I have, I am actually going to pop in a picture here so that you can see what the finished product's going to be. I don't wanna share the actual pattern because uh, that is something that is available for purchase. But I'll pop in the picture and show you what I'm working on. This is the Create. I uh, can't remember the exact name of it, but it's like a rainbow create. And of course, it had rainbow. I thought it was super pretty. Uh, which way do I go here? I think it's this way. Yeah. So this one, I have a really good start on. This is going to be the letter A. There's actually going to be a rainbow, like you see in the picture, of triangles going across. I love rainbow. I love, I kind of had to change the colors a little bit because I didn't have everything on hand that they had and my store didn't have it available. So I kind of converted it to what I have. Um, but this is a really good start. I'm really happy with this. It feels, I'm a texture person, so I love the feel of it. So that is a good start. I am a middle starter. I know some people like to start in corners. I, I kind of learned, um, when I very first started cross stitch to start in the center. So that is kind of what I stick with. So there's that work in progress. And then here is another one. And this has got my thread in it that I kind of wanted to show you. So this has those droppers on here. Um, I don't have stickers. So I just took a Sharpie marker and wrote the number up here of what the thread is. So this color is 964. So this one is actually a pattern by Stitching with the Housewives. I actually need to get a few more pairs of scissors because what I want to do is have everything I need in my kit. So pattern, my needle minder, that's actually from Spellbinders, and then some scissors. So I don't want to have to go digging through all my project bags to find my scissors. I just want to grab it and have everything I need in there. This is what I have so far. Now this one, like I said, I'm kind of getting into Valentine's. I, I, I want to be able to have some decorations to put um, I have a cute little display in my bathroom. I want to put some in my kitchen. So I'm just starting small. This is something that I can accomplish and not feel very overwhelmed with. So this one is coming together really well. Um, I did have to change a couple things just to kind of work with the colors I had because I wanted to get it started. I really do find these very helpful to keep these on the rings like this. It's just um, maybe sometime I'll do a video on how I did it, but there are videos out there right now on how you do this. I did find a few few tips and tricks here and there that I found very helpful. So this, I definitely love this. This is just so much better than those wrap around pieces. Okay, so that is everything that I planned on sharing today. I think that's a really good starting point. I only have a few projects in progress. 
I want to try and get those stitched before I get too far ahead of myself. I know a lot of people have a lot that they start at one time. Um, and some of you, if you're my card making followers, you might be like, Mindy, how are you getting this all done? Because I do a lot of cards. Um, and really, I needed something to reset my brain because I do make a lot of cards. And sometimes I just need to take a break. I need to just kind of reset. And instead of taking a nap, I decided to fill that time with cross stitching. So I do this cross stitching, you know, either on a lunch break, because I do give myself lunch breaks. I'm self-employed, I work at home, but I give myself lunch breaks. Um, also when I'm going to bed, it's something I have a set bedtime that I give myself. I'll go lay down, I pop on my light, my magnifying glass, and I'll sit and stitch for a little while. I get a little bit done here and there, some days a little more than others, just depending on my work schedule and how I'm timed out. I really have enjoyed it. It's, I, I hope you'll follow me along with this journey. I know I'm quite the newbie, but I think we can all learn some things when it comes to starting out and maybe some things that you might've forgotten about. But I am gonna give you some resources down below of the designs that I'm working on and where you can get started. I'll link some of those video channels down below as well because I think they're very, very helpful and a great way to get started. It has definitely helped me. So if you made it to the end, thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you will continue with me on this journey. See you next time.